Hey guys, George here, and welcome back to my channel. Recently, I've been a man on a mission. The mission to buy my first Les Paul. So, I've been playing guitar for so many years, you'd think I would have one by now, but I don't. And there's a lot of good reasons for that. The Les Paul is a tricky and polarizing thing for me. Because a lot of my heroes play Les Pauls. I mean, if it wasn't for Jimmy Page, I probably wouldn't be playing guitar today. But regardless of that, the Les Pauls have always had some glaring weaknesses, and I've been close to buying some. I remember I had one on loan from a friend years ago, and I couldn't get over the weight. It just didn't sit right on me. And then I played plenty of them that were just kind of duds. Quality control issues, and then those Les Pauls that were just so dark and stuffy. I just couldn't get anything musical out of them and I've played a lot of them, but inside there was still that yearning for that tone, that characteristic Les Paul growl, that, that mid-range punch that you can really only get from a Les Paul. Plus, if we're being real, they're, they're gorgeous instruments. Uh, the shape, the tops, they just look cool. So my quest was to find one, and I've been searching for months. And if you know anything about me, a very opportunistic shopper. The guitar we're talking about, can you, let me go get it. So right around Black Friday, a bunch of these come back in stock. This is the Epiphone Lazarus. If you don't know about it, it's basically an Epiphone with 50 specs, burst buckler twos and threes, uh, with Joe Bonamassa's name on the case. And it's nicknamed Lazarus. He calls it Lazarus. Epiphone calls it that. Not me. I don't name my guitars. But uh, it's based on a old, old Les Paul that uh, he rediscovered an old 59 and he resurrected it. And uh, this thing is resurrecting my faith and, and, and love for Les Pauls and Gibson style guitars. I mean, it was a no brainer for me. They're selling for more on the used market. And I really didn't have anything to lose if I wanted to get a 50 spec Les Paul for relatively cheap. Taking it out of the case and grabbing it for the first time, this neck was uh, big to say the least. It's a 50 style neck and most of my guitars have thin necks. I like the accessibility, the playability, but this one, it kind of adds like a little bit of an attitude to it. And of course it's got the Les Paul look and the swagger. Uh, this top, is just a veneer but it's a they call it a quadruple a veneer and it looks outstanding i think for a veneer i i mean i have no complaints it's also got the nice gibson inlays that we associate with the les pauls and the sgs it's got the clusen style tuners it just checks all the boxes in terms of nailing the look so I spoke about one of the main reasons for me not liking Les Pauls was because of the weight and how uncomfortable it is to play. So that was a huge thing for me. If I was gonna buy Les Paul, it had to be light. And light by Les Paul standards, meaning nine pounds, sub nine pounds if I could. And this thing weighs in at just about eight and a half pounds. So it's a gem. <laughs>
Another thing about this is it comes with a bunch of case candy and a really nice hard case. I mean, the case is cool. It's got a it's got pink interior, brown leather outside, gold hardware. It looks a lot like the real thing. It's not quite the real thing, but like this guitar, it looks the part. That kind of made it a really sweet deal and something that collectors are going to want. So I hate to look at guitars and investment as investments, but when you get to the point where you have as many as I do, you need some kind of justification. <laughs> the biggest surprise for me here was the fact that they included Gibson Burst Bucker 2s and 3s. And they do this in their uh, Epiphone inspired by Gibson, the 59 Epiphone. They all kind of have these and they're great pickups. I really, really like them. Uh, they're musical, they're warm, they're fat. I really don't have a complaint about them. Uh, yeah, I, I like them a lot. Is this guitar gonna scratch the itch for me? Maybe, we'll find out. Uh, I have something else in the works that might surprise you guys, so stay tuned for that. Some things I thought I wasn't gonna like about this guitar that I thought might be a deal breaker, or maybe some QC issues, you know, with the fretboard and the binding. And when it arrived, to be fair, there was a little bit of a glue mark on one of the frets. And, uh, you know, the frets and the binding weren't absolutely perfect, but they were really good for this price point. And the fretboard is an Indian Laurel, which I thought, ooh, you know, that can have that light look and totally kind of ruin the mystique of the Les Paul, you know, the dark rosewood fretboard on the lighter top. But if you look at the fretboard, it looks great. And I put it up next to my 335, which has a rosewood fretboard, and they're nearly identical. The neck is fat, and I didn't think I'd be able to adjust to it, but after a couple of days of playing it, it almost added a little bit of comfort to the playing, if that makes any sense. So can I be happy with this guitar, with this Les Paul that doesn't say Gibson on the headstock? I think I can, but I'd really like to compare it to the, the real thing. Um, see what the differences are, the fit and finish differences, and um, to see if this can really stack up tonally. I mean, it's got Gibson pickups, it's 50s wiring, it's, it's got everything that you want. And I, I can tell it really, it, it really fits the sound. It, it sounds authentic, to be honest. If this guitar was done in a full gloss, I mean, obviously they're not gonna do Epiphone in a nitro, but if it was done in a full gloss, this thing would be a stunner. They call this an H gloss. It's kind of like a semi-matte, you know, it does have a little bit of shine to it, but it's um, definitely more of a matte finish all around. And yeah, you see the pickup cover? If the whole guitar was shiny like that pickup cover, this thing would be a stunner. A couple reasons why I picked this particular guitar up, because this isn't really something that I would usually go for. So eight and a half pounds, killer top, killer, killer top. I'll put um, the Sweetwater stock photo up that uh, really convinced me to buy it. One thing I will say is that the Epiphone brand puts a lot into these Joe Bonamassa guitars. They're all unique. They all seem to play well. They all seem to sell well. So it gives me confidence in the future to know that if when they make a collab with him, it's something that's well thought out and it's gonna be a step above the rest for sure. I mean, I never thought I'd be paying nearly a thousand bucks for an Epiphone, but this one is really good. This is not your run of the mill guitar at all. You guys so much for watching this video now if you like this and maybe you want a comparison with a gibson 
please let me know down in the comments below. Smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't. It helps the channel out a lot. And there's going to be a lot more music and guitar related, maybe Les Paul related content in the near future. So until next time, see ya.